Welcome everyone to this week's episode of After the Bell. I am, of course, Jeff Meacham. Happy Monday. Hope you guys had an awesome SummerSlam weekend. I know I did. I was out of access both days. Had a great time at iOS Saturday night. We'll get to that in just a second. And just a tremendous weekend. I will we'll get into SummerSlam coverage more on Dad's on oh, Thursday this week. What the hell? Since we have Renegade tomorrow with the Battleground preview for this Saturday. But, um... The interview with John Morrison was awesome at Iowa West, and we will throw to that in just a little bit, but I wanted to give you guys a chance, I, to give myself a chance to get to your guys' questions that I didn't address last week because of the situation that happened at Dad's 100. So I'm going to get to a few of y'all's questions. I'm gonna, just going to kind of breeze through this here. So if I apologize if I seem like I'm rushing, I'm just trying to see exactly how many I can get to before I need to throw to the Morrison interview I did on Saturday night, and we'll get to that again, as I said. Jeremy Jubbles23, what do you think about Antonio Cesaro, Carlo Castagnoli? I find him bland. He's just, well, not good enough to be in WWE. That is a big old heap and crock of shit. I'm sorry, Jeremy, but Claudio belongs. Claudio is awesome. Um, he's the new United States champion. Congratulations to Claudio at SummerSlam. The pre show, he defeated the, the Cobra Striker himself, Santino Morella. We love Claudio at the Constitution Studios YouTube channel. He has been a homie of ours for a while. We love him. We loved him at Gorilla when he was teamed with Hero. We loved him when he was the PWG World Champion. We loved him in Ring of Honor. And I am proud to have known him win, I guess is the best way I can say it. Um, him and Oksana are a good team. Oksana, you know, again, she's finally seemed to have found her niche with with Claudio as his uh, lover, his love interest on the show. So, big ups to Claudio Castagnoli, Antonio Cesaro on the new United States Championship reign, and I see nothing but the future, the the big, the big one for Claudio in the months and years to come. I'm very, very excited. Um, let's see here, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Da -da -da -da. Oh goodness. You know, I, I, I addressed a lot of this stuff on the, the tweet itself because I sent out, the, I was so bored up there in freaking Juniper Hills last week that I let you guys ask me a bunch of questions. But um, somebody asked me actually what I think about the whole Scooby-Doo thing with WWE, and I, for one, am looking forward to it. I have been a big Scooby fan for a number of years, ever since I was a little kid watching the reruns on whatever channel they were on back then before Cartoon Network monopolized the world at the end of the day. Um, it was awesome. This here that Scooby-Doo and the WWE would be teaming up to have an animated feature based around the Mystery Machine gang going to WrestleMania and having people like AJ and John and Vince and I believe Hunter was thrown in there too. A whole bunch of different names listed on there. I am just so excited for this. It's going to be a great movie, I think. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be like good quality like family stuff. And again, WWE's going for that. PG Entertainment, you know, they've been They've been touting that line for a number of years now, ever since the whole Mattel deal and in the Linda McMahon Senate campaign. I am actually looking forward to it. Um, I uh, Scooby Scooby is one of my favorite cartoon characters of all time. So I, I hope I hope they do a good job with it. I hope they don't just totally botch this and fuck everything up because. You can do Scooby-Doo really well, but you can also really fuck it up if you try your hardest. And knowing WWE, they probably will. The Pennsylvanian sensation himself, Greg Cherry. Big shout-out to Greg and Jen Cherry back on the East Coast. I love you guys. You guys are my best friends back there. I look forward to seeing you guys win, and if that happens, I'm just, I'm Jones. I, lo I love you guys. Do you think that the yes chance for Brian Danielson are similar to the you suck chance to Kurt Angle? My goodness, yes. Um, the difference is, for a while, Kurt seemed to embrace the you suck. When he first came back from the neck surgery in 2000... Oh, goodness, 2003, when he uh, left after WrestleMania 19, um, it was very cool to see him come out there and like, it's just like embrace the you suck chance. It was funnier in hell to see that. Um... And I think that with Brian, he is embracing the yes and the no chance to a certain extent, but he's not like going out there like openly inviting people to chant you suck like Kurt did back in 03. I think that this yes no chant thing with Brian is going to build towards something where we're going to see the unleashing, the reignition of the American dragon, Brian Danielson. He's going to come out there and just start, you know, 
calamutilating people and just tearing them apart limb from limb, brick by brick, and it's going to be an awesome experience to see. I cannot wait to see Brian Danielson unleashed. Um, that's going to do it for the Twitter questions, and I'm sorry if I didn't get to y'all on Facebook and the Facebook fan page and everything. I will get to that next week, because at the end of the day, I got stuff to plug, and I'm looking forward to it, and I'm very excited. Saturday night, after SummerSlam Access, our buddy Kalea drove JJ and I out to Hollywood, over near Hollywood and Vine. Shout out to Hollywood and Vine, because that's an awesome location. Um... And we had the opportunity to see the guys at the Improv Olympic West Club perform several different shows, two of which we were heavily involved in at the end of the day, because at 9 o'clock was called the Armando Show, which was hosted by former WWE superstar John Morrison. And then 11.30, our good friend Christian Rosenberg, you remember him from the XMV days. If you don't, you should. Google him. Uh, the voice of choice out here in Southern California for pro wrestling announcers. Uh, he hosted a thing called Cut That Promo, which co-starred. John Morrison as his co-host, and they brought out several different people. I got to see a whole bunch of homies from the IWL and from various other leagues here in Southern California, but before we got to cut that promo, we stepped upstairs, and in addition to John Morrison, I also got to talk briefly with former WWE Divas champion, Molina. Welcome everyone to this episode of After the Bell. It's a very special episode. You notice it's not just me in the shot. I have two very special guests. John Morrison with me, as well as the lovely Melina. <laughs> first time seeing Melina since the, 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 the Frankenstein's uh, signing. First time seeing you since SummerSlam Access last year. It was an awesome time. And got a Frankenstein's coming up, uh, signing coming up on October 6th, by the way. There you go, October 6th. Will you guys be out there? Um, yeah, you'll, we'll both be out there. Come out. Awesome. Um, come okay. catch your John Morrison and Melina autographs. I'm going to bring the fur coat. So if you want a photo off with the fur coat, and down at the Frankenstein's convention on October 6th. Of course, it's going to be October, so we'll be as hot as it was at the Frankenstein's today when the poor leader was out there in the warehouse sweating her off. So, you know, it was, it was awesome, from what I was told. But I want to talk to you guys both because it's been it's been about nine months for you, and how long since you've been gone now? I don't know. I think it's um, going to be a year now. Yeah, it's been a year. Yeah. And, you know, when people found out that we were going to have you on the show, you were completely surprised. It was awesome that you're here. I appreciate that very much. Um, I, had, I had found out through our mutual friend Christian Rosenberg, even doing the iOS shows, and I just kind of wanted to know what led you from, you know, the WWE universe, if you will, to coming to, you know, Southern California, where you live out here, and doing the iOS shows. What kind of led you down that path? Well, you know, I look at my more wrestling career is like I just kind of a stepping stone to really get my foot in the door here at iOS, and I, I feel like I've, uh, I've been I've been doing pretty well. Um, I've, I finished a couple of uh, improv classes. And um, you know the, the championships, the ECW championship, Intercontinental championship, five-time tag team championships, accolades, two-time title winner, things that I've done in the WWE, I think have really got me uh, my foot in the door here at IO, and I'm just you know I'm hoping to climb up the ladder here now. So are you are you looking to do like move beyond like the improv kind of like go back like in like the acting world, or is it just you focus straight here and go on from there? Or? Um, you know what, dude? Uh, I, I'm having a good time here at the Improv Olympic, okay. and um, it's, uh, it, it is what it is. Um, and that's the best thing to speak for whatever. Okay, got it. Um, <laughs> Improv Olympic's great. We have a show tonight at that promo with yes. Chris Rosenberg. That's what I'm here for. Yes. Um, yes. The, uh, the Improv stuff is uh, is great to keep you quick, mentally quick, to, to think, to Definitely. be able to speak, project yourself, to have to develop that public personality. Absolutely. And that's, uh, that's what you need for everything in entertainment. As far as uh, wrestling goes, um, TV, film, entertainment is entertainment, you know? Um, sports entertainment, wrestling, pro wrestling, whatever you want to call it, has a lot of carryover into TV and film, and vice versa, which is uh, which is what I'm trying to develop, like the that on-air public personality, presence, confidence, you name it, all that stuff. I think improv's a good tool for that. And we, had, we saw you in the audience during the, during the Armando show, just cracking up. Oh, having a good time. And, and, and then, and then you, you, you've been here with the, the shows before, being involved with Cut That Promo and everything. Yeah. And you, you've done a tremendous job. So oh, I just, love watching him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> She's heard the stories. It's totally different because when you go to wrestling, it's like you've got to be serious. When you're angry at somebody and you're wrestling with somebody, it's about something serious. So you're exactly. that angry, serious person. And to see him go from that to yeah. improv yeah. and just be funny and have fun, like it's totally a different element. Like it's it's yeah. fun for me to see. Yeah. It, it, was, it was amazing seeing him up there telling telling the Vince stories and still trying to, okay, let's not say too much. <laughs> It was amazing, like seeing you do this jump on stage, and we're all upstairs just 
cracking up at the whole thing. It was amazing. Well, the main, the main thing about improv is you really just have to be honest. And I yeah. don't think that like my opinion of Vince is something that I need to hide from Vince in public. Definitely not. You know? He's, he's crazy. <laughs> he's a crazy old man. But he's an eccentric genius. Exactly. You know? And like that's, that's what happens. You know? you're, you're a billionaire eccentric genius. Um, you have an experience of life that very few people in the entire world experience. And um, that creates like that weird bubble that, that Vince lives in. But it's also like a, a bubble that has been grown in and fluorescent. And he's got an eye for what works and what doesn't, and what he likes and what he doesn't like. And he goes with his gut, and he is very hands-on. And like, you know, more power to the guy for being hands-on. And, you know, the people out there, when they found out you were going to be here, they wanted me to let you know that we, we all feel very much that his gut on letting you, know, letting you, you know, it was complete under ridiculousness. Well, so, know. and, and we're, we're starting, we're not seeing you every Monday night or Friday night, depending on what brand you're on that day. So, <laughs> Appreciate that. I mean, that's my own word. But well, I, you, I really yeah. appreciate that. And um, I, I agree with those sentiments. Right. Well, we just want to thank John for being on the show. We've been doing it really quick. We're trying to get downstairs to get ready for coming. Yeah, we'll so so come up. Yes. I got one thing I'd like to ask from beyond the camera. Um, talk a little bit about. Oh no, I'm not going to take my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> talk, a little, no, I'm just kidding. talk a little bit about some of the other companies you've worked for since um, being let go from WWE. Um, I know you became. WWFX champion and wrestled Shelton Benjamin. Take her shirt off now. Is that? Because that's definitely not happening. Kidding now. Jeez, Louise, let him ask the question. Please. You two. Yeah. One thing they don't know is when you do the Armando, you can like. drink for free all that. So <laughs> one shot uh, the other companies I've worked for have been very fun. Um, you know, all, all of them hands down, meeting a lot of new people, experiencing pro wrestling from a from a completely different perspective. It's been a lot of fun. A lot of fun performing in front of uh, arenas and. Um, you know, pro wrestling is awesome, which is a, uh, which is why I do it and why I loved it as a kid, and I know Melina feels the same, and so it's been a, it's been a crazy experience, a lot of fun. You mentioned you mentioned during the, the Armando show tonight, uh, interacting with Jackson P for the, for the first time at their wrestling show. Can you yeah. tell tell everybody about that a little bit? Or? Oh man, yeah, the uh, the JCW show it was just <laughs> like last Sunday, and um. Melina was there, but it was first hand, and I know that they filmed it, and I'm sure you can find it on tape at some point. My highlight of the show was, uh, I was getting stuff thrown at me, water bottles, half open cans of Faygo, because that's what they have there. That's what they have, yeah, they don't do sure. sure. Coke or Pepsi, they do Faygo. But um, I was on the top rope celebrating my uh, my win over um, the King and, uh, and my Hardy in a triple threat, and I cut out my periphery, like this can of Faygo coming to my face, and I grabbed it. And threw it back at the, the guy that threw it at me, and like nailed him, and the whole crowd cheered. And but then I uh, decided to leave. Which is, yeah, yeah, probably a good idea. Get yeah, yeah. yeah. the yeah. But which is which is cool because you know that's the kind of thing that um, you can do at an ICP show, but probably not any other show. Probably not. You definitely couldn't do it in WWE because throwing things at fans. Is an and um, you know, and most of the time, like it is, it's a no-no. You know, you don't throw stuff to fans, but like if you're getting stuff thrown at you, and like you throw it back at them, and the whole crowd cheers. It's kind of like one in Rome. Yes, so exactly. It was the Romans. Anyway, <laughs> um, thank you very much for having me as a part of After the Bell. After the Bell. Yes. Molina has had a lovely time as well. <laughs> there you go. Uh, short but sweet. We ran short on time, unfortunately, because of. Uh, they were trying to rehearse and get ready for Cut That Promo, which it should be up on YouTube soon. I will promote the shit out of it when it goes on there. Thank you guys so much that actually came out because of my tweets and my Facebook posts. If you guys came out because of what I did, I appreciate it. I know Christian Rosenberg appreciates it. I know the IL West appreciates it. They were sold out every show Saturday night, it looked like to me. I'm bummed I missed the Nikki Hunter uh, comic comic book live, uh, whatever, I forget what that was now, but I'm sorry I missed that, because I haven't seen Nikki Hunter since Bakersfield, oh god, that was like four years ago, looking forward to seeing her, maybe next time, but uh, I, I've been talking with Johnny Molina, uh, and I, we may see more of Molina back on the YouTube channel in the very near future, I hope I, hope I get to bring that to you guys, in the meantime, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day here on that Monday, and we'll see you tomorrow for Renegade Wrestling, and for the rest of the week, have a good day.